Thank you for staying with us on the AM show. And at this juncture, we talk education. Of, of course, yesterday we heard from the Minister of Education for the first time at the Ministry of Information, uh, you know, presser events. And there were so many things that were talk, you know, uh, spoken of from the 10 STEM schools to be constructed, put up by the close of next year to the boosting of infrastructure as far as education is concerned in the country, not just free SHS, and to other matters, you know, of concern, even Wi-Fi in schools being brought up. Well, joining us for the conversation, we have Echo Asifwa, who is a member of parliament for TAFU. He also is on the Education Committee uh, of uh, Parliament, and he joins us for this conversation. Uh, Mr. Asifwa, a very good morning to you, sir. Do we have Echo Asifwa? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you join us. I hope you're well. I'm here and happy. How are you this morning? Ah, by God's grace. God has gifted us. It's been us a with sad that. weekend, actually. <laughs> I know. It's been the same for all of us. But thank you for yeah. making time uh, to join us for this conversation. And right. I, I'll pick your brains on, you know, generally what the education minister has been saying. Now, you have been, interestingly, you've been PRO at, at the ministry. And so you have a hands on knowledge of, you know, the workings of the Ministry of our Educational Setup. Looking at some of the matters that were mentioned yesterday by uh, the education minister, do you feel we are on a healthy path towards building our educational structures, especially in respect of free SHS? What is your thinking? Well, uh, let me say a very good morning to you mm. and to your cherished viewers. Um, free SHS um, has been very topical. Um, not only today, but even before the build-up to the 2016 elections. And uh, we've all known that uh, Free SHS has been one of the uh, commitments of the new patriotic party, i.e. His Excellency the President, Anadu Danko Kufuado. Now, uh, Free SHS in 2017, uh, was implemented, even though it was shouted with a lot of doubt as to um, its aptness, whether we were not in a hurry to implement it. But, uh, of course, the belief has been that it is better to have our young men and young women in our various classrooms to learn, uh, whether uh, they sit on desk or they even sit on the floor to have education, rather than not having education at all, because the statistics over the years has been suggesting that yearly we had about 100,000 of our young men and young women not going to school. Mm. Now, <clears throat> the same statistics as put out by the education minister yesterday um, clearly also suggested that uh, from 2014 to 2016, uh, the numbers that we had in our various senior high schools was about 800,000. Uh, fast forward, from 2016 to 2021, uh, we've had an increment to uh, close to 1.3 million. That only corroborates the idea mm. that averagely, every year we had an increment of about 100,000. Mm. Just about uh, 1.2 million currently. Come again? Just about 1.2 million currently. 1.261 is close to 1.3 million. Is that okay? We can always strike the average, but you go on. Absolutely. So um, clearly you could, you could see that uh, we've made giant strides as far as access uh, is concerned. Mm. Uh, we, we also decided that it wouldn't be uh, out of place if we also deal with um, quality. Uh, quality issues uh, do not happen by chance. Mm. Quality issues are deliberative attempt to ensure that you see quality in our education. And so, um, if you have Ghana writing um, Wasi, if you have Sierra Leone also writing Wasi, if you have Gambia, Nigeria, about five African countries that write West African Examination Council Examination. And if across all these five countries, we had 465 of our young men and young women um, attaining eight A's 
in all the subjects. And out of the 465, 411 uh, comes from Ghana. Uh, you can only be content with the fact that Ghana is doing well as far as uh, quality is also uh, concerned. Uh, <clears throat> the quality, as I said, didn't happen by chance. It happened through the provision of uh, a number of things, uh, especially the provision of core textbooks um, that we decided to give. Um, government spent a lot of money in doing so. Uh, intervention of grants to schools, um, core subject teachers training, because the first time we decided to uh, train our core uh, subject teachers. Uh, again, provision of bursaries to girls and uh, remedial packages delivered to students, and also the provision of the past questions, which a lot of people criticized. Uh, but we felt that, uh, uh, be that as it may, uh, the usage of past questions in our various senior high schools uh, are things that you just cannot um, say that it's not happening. Or people are not using it. I, for example, used past questions when I was writing my uh, WASI. I know you also used it when you're writing your WASI or SSC. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, the the gap or the unfairness or the injustice that it brings because uh, rich people are supposed uh, are able to get for their kids. Uh, poor parents are unable to get for their um, case when it happens like that, it brings some amount of unfairness. So government believe that since it is an essential part of the writing of our WASI, government should be able to spend enough money to be able to do so. Now, uh, we we also uh, numbered the achievements that we made so far with respect to the education sector from 2017-2020. You remember at the time from 2000 to 2017 to 2020. Dr. Aduchim himself was a deputy minister. He was deputizing Dr. Matthew Boku Prempe. And so, uh, apart from the implementation of free SHS, uh, quite a number of things. Uh, for example, the introduction of a four-year bachelor uh, of education uh, program at the College of Education because there have always been a disconnect uh, between what is learned at our various training colleges and what is taught mm. at the basic level. Mm. You cannot learn E and teach E, uh, put differently, learning A in the training colleges and teaching B at the basic level was something that we realized was uh, uh, not helping our education system. And so there was a need to review the curriculum at the teacher training level and also review the curriculum at the basic level so that uh, students at the basic level will now be concentrating on, concentrating on critical thinking, problem solving, and what have you. So the review at the teacher training level uh, made it possible for us to now have a bachelor degree program at mm. the training colleges. Mm. And so for now, you don't go to our training colleges and be awarded a diploma after a four-year uh, program, but mm. now you'll be awarded a degree. Mm. It's also going to limit uh, teacher time on task uh, uh, issues that we've been having yeah, it's going to limit absenteeism because most of our teachers were also having the edge to be able to have uh, upgrade from their diploma in uh, diploma to degree and sometimes even masters because they have to stay out of school to be able to have those programs and what have you. So, Mr. Asafu, in, 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 in a nutshell, yes. a lot of positives to take away from yesterday's engagement with the press, uh, so to speak. And of course, we'll have to break them down. So uh, pardon the interruption. I'll come back right to you, but let me also acknowledge the, uh, the, the presence of Peter Anti, uh, Executive Director, Institute for Education uh, Studies. Mr. Anti, thank you for joining the conversation. Good morning. Uh, can you unmute for us, please? Good morning. Can you hear me? Great. I can hear you. Uh, thank you for joining uh, the conversation. Uh, I mean, there's a lot we're going to be discoursing on, but thank you for joining. I just wanted to acknowledge uh, your uh, presence with us. Uh, let me just uh, do this right before I come to you, Mr. Anti. Uh, Mr. Asifwa, now you've spoken about uh, free SHS. In fact, you spent a lot of uh, the last few minutes touching on it. I just want to find out from you, what has been uh, the impact, and this is addressed to Mr. Asifua, 
What has been the impact of free SHS in your constituency? What are the real gains that you can talk about as far as, you know, your tenure is concerned? Do we have Mr. Asifu on the line? Come again. So uh, just before I go to Mr. Anti, I was just trying to find out from you. You, you started talking a lot about free SHS, among yes. other things. But I just wanted to narrow it down briefly before I go to uh, Mr. Anti. Free yes. SHS, you know, over the, these last few months that you've been Member of Parliament, almost six months, what has been the real impact in your community that you can share? Well, uh, the, the, the real impact can be measured through improved learning outcomes. Mm. How learning outcomes as compared to previously, uh, has been enormous in terms of um, a success. Uh, now, I will say this. If you check the West African Examination Council website, mm -hmm. the good people of Old Tafo constituency were part of the people that in 2014, 2016, we never had the opportunity to have uh, about 50% of the population who wrote West African Examination crossing the threshold of 50%. Put differently, there has not been an instance from 2014 to 2018 whereby my people or the people of Old Tafu constituency, which is part of the larger population, was able to get 50% of that population getting A1 to C6 in mathematics. In 2019-2020, the same West African Examination Council website will suggest to you that for the first time, we had a good number of the population, which all Tafu constituency um, um, students are also part of it, having 65% of them passing A1 to C6 as far as mathematics is concerned. This is a better learning outcome as compared to previously. And this is because of the implementation of the free SHS and uh, not leaving out quality. I've already indicated to you that quality does not happen by chance. Quality happens by the provision of essential things that allows the, um, the education to be successful that we, uh, the way we want it, i.e. provision of core textbooks, uh, intervention grounds to schools, and what have you. Mm. Now, again, if you check the same website for West African Examination Council, you realize that the same period, 2014 to 2018, it is only in 2018 that we had, for the first time, our students getting 51%. But before 2018, there has never been an instance whereby those who wrote West African Examination Council, that is the WASI, and had A1 to C6 in integrated science, was able to cross even 44%. Mm. But in 2019 and 2020, you can have figures like 63% of the students or the population who wrote West African Examination Council having 63% and 52.53% respectively. I will conclude with this. Check English language to the same website. Uh, it is only in 2016 uh, or 2017 also that we have 53 and 54% respectively. A1266 in 2019, 2020 was 49% and 57.34% a record percentage figure ever since we took over office in 2017. So, so uh, real you, tangible you, benefits in, in your constituency, basically? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, the population that we have, all the people who wrote the West African Examination Council also includes people from Old Tafu, especially in the senior high schools that we have here, Osei Senior High School, mm. uh, Osmania Senior High School, al Zaria Senior High School, and they were part of the population, and you could see that this time when most of the students were able to do it. That is the only way that you can assess that there is or there was uh, a proper intervention in the senior high schools. Uh, we did not only deal with access, but we also dealt with quality as well, so that we would be able to ensure we get, uh, ensure that we get the desired results okay. that we so much desire right. in our senior high school. Let, let me now uh, turn my gaze to uh, Peter Anti, who is Executive Director, Institute for Education Studies. And three things uh, that we can at least take away from what Mr. Edichum said yesterday has to do with improving mm -hmm. on quality, access and relevance, which, uh, you know, the Member of Parliament for Tafu has been speaking about as well. If you had to pick out your key highlights in just about a minute from yesterday's event, bordering on these three 
matters. What would they be? Uh, good morning. I, I didn't hear the first part of the question. So yesterday, three things that uh, Mr. Educhum, uh, Dr. Educhum, I should say, uh, highlighted access, relevance, and quality of education, and how to get about that in our entire educational uh, setup to improve on these three uh, yardsticks or measuring rods, if you like. Now, from all that he made mention of, from free SHS to exams for pupils in class four and all of that, what would be your key highlights, your key takeaways in just about a minute? All right, so I, I, I think that uh, we will have to uh, look at the national assessment, which uh, they, they are about to do for basis four. Mm. Uh, that is something that we will have to uh, subject it to a lot of analysis because um, there are issues pertaining to that. Um, we also have to look at the issue of the, the debate about the performance of the students at the, uh, uh, just the, the last uh, SSC and uh, WASI, sorry, WASI, and uh, the attribution to um, uh, free SHS. I just wanted to remind uh, my brother, uh, Echo, said that the, he forgot to also add social studies because it's like the performance of social studies for that year dropped from, I think, 73% or so. So when you are talking about... No, if I'm allowed, I can to... do that analysis for you as well. Uh, uh, please, please hold for me for now, uh, Mr. Sifua. <laughs> please hold on for me. For well, do that, uh, no, I, I, I was that. just reminding you. I because just because reminding in 2019, it was 75%. It just dropped from 75 to 64%. That is even higher it, than the 2016 yes, no, but So, Mr. Sifua, if, if you can I'm, if you I'm could just saying allow. that when you are doing some of this analysis, you mm. just have to include all of that. No, I didn't so that we, we that. see the, the total but picture. That, but the point so that, 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 is, that, that, that is all right, gentlemen. So, 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 gentlemen, thank you very much. Let, let's do this. Let's have one person speak at a time. Let's have one person <laughs> have a bite. Mr. Asifua, if you have any reactions... Honorable MP. Mr. Asifua, if you have any reactions, you can just hold on to them, and when you're, you have your turn to speak, you can chip that in. Uh, is that okay, sir? All right. I, I believe we have an agreement. Uh, so, Mr. Anti, you were making a point. Yeah, and, and so, so for, for, for us... Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so for us, we, we still we, we still want to push the we still want to push the quality debate further. Okay. We we still think that we will need to do a, a, a scientific analysis of what really happened uh, that that's resulted in the kind of we are not done playing the role played by anybody at all. No, not that. But I think that if we are so much interested in education, then we should also be so much interested interested in the data and the science as we, they used to say it with the um, 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 the COVID issue, so that we'll be able to ascertain what are the factors contributing to the performance of the students. And and anybody in that space will tell you that you cannot pinpoint one, two, three factors to say that these are the reasons why a student passed this, uh, uh, show this kind of performance. And we also want to even extend the debate further to not only limit ourselves to outcomes, I, I, sorry, to student performance, which we call, which we know in uh, academic sense are just uh, outputs. We want to see what is the uh, level of um, um, contribution these students will be able to have on the broader, uh, broader economy. And that will depend on the kind of curriculum that they have been introduced to and the pathway that they need to assess going forward. So I, I we also want to uh, focus on that. Then we also want to say, state that in, in, in spite of the fact that we are doing a lot of infrastructure works, there are a lot of infrastructure works that also needs to be carried out. And that would be uh, uh, well uh, uh, brought up when NASIA, I mean, the school, been put the, school, the school inspectorate uh, um, authority mm. it begins to do their work fully because some of these schools and the tree that we keep talking about. Well, unfortunately, uh, there the connection uh, well, with... If uh, they are reported okay. and they are walked through... Some Go of, ahead. Hello? Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, some of these some of these schools and the trees and lack of infrastructure that we talk about, if they are reported and they are they are, they are walked through the, the reporting chain, they will get to the officials for them to also work on it. So it will be the work of the school inspectors when they kickstart their work fully to now bring to the attention of authorities these infrastructure challenges that persist in our schools. And interestingly, if you look at uh, MS data, the data from the Ministry of Education, it gives you indication of the number of schools that needs uh, moderate repairs, the number of schools that need complete repairs, and the number of schools that need 
touch here, touch there. So these are information that are available to the ministry, right. and we think that they should be able to work on it and improve on the on the infrastructure as as we go ahead. And, so and these will be my three things that I will just touch. Right. The education minister did acknowledge that a lot has to be done as far as infrastructure is concerned. He spoke about those uh, community schools to be built, which would, of course, have a different uh, setup, a more improved uh, setup. But, of course, he did acknowledge that there was a lot still to be done in that respect. But let's talk, let's talk money matters uh, as we move on from here. Uh, so far, we've spent some 7.7 .7 billion Ghana cities uh, on the back of rolling out free SHS. This year alone, we spent upwards of 1.9 billion uh, Ghana cities. Again, we've been told by the Deputy Finance Minister designate, Abnaw Sayasari, uh, that, well, they would be looking to borrow more to fund free SHS. When you look at the progress we have made so far, uh, do you find any surprises in there in terms of how much we've been spending? I... From, from our perspective, we think that no amount is too much for an investment in education. And we put it this way. If you have a land, then you want to grow um, something like cocoa. You will need to invest a lot of money in it. Uh, those in cocoa farming knows the number of years that it will take for you to now harvest the cocoa. That an investment into your cocoa farm. That is the same thing that you do. That is the same thing that you do when you are investing in education. The difference here is that in education, when you are doing these kinds of investments, you do not get a readily kind of um, 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 uh, returns. And that is why sometimes people find it difficult to associate the investment you are doing in education to a specific returns. So we don't, we are not worried about the number of money or amount of money that is push into the education sector. We are worried rather about where the money is coming from and whether that money is sustainable. And that is why from day one, we have said, and we will keep pushing, that if you want to really sustain this particular policy, you might want to spend almost like 10 billion, like we spent 7.7 .7 billion, but out of that amount of money that you have spent, 50% is coming from the oil resources. And we have said that that is not a source that you can rely on. You look at the nature of the oil market and you can say that it, at a point in time, the, the, the oil, the, the risk, that particular resource will not be there for you to finance your free SHS policy. When that's uh, time comes. Where are you going to get the money to finance the, the policy, which is so important and which has the potential to transform the economy of this country? So you need to have to, to start having that kind of sustainability debate. You need to have to start talking about how do we finance this policy beyond this kind of resource that we have in, 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 in at our disposal. And this is the, the, the conversation that we will need to have, whether the, the, the authorities like it or not, because we cannot continue finance free SHS from a finance resource if we really want to sustain the policy. And, and unfortunately, if you push some of this discussion, it is tend to make you look as if you are against the policy. But that is not the case. We will need to have that kind of, kind of discussion and find ways and means to improve on the sustainability part of the, um, uh, of, of the financing policy that we are looking at. And a lot of, a lot of uh, um, recommendations have been made, uh, given to the requisite authorities, and they are not acting on it because for, for me personally, I think that free SHS is a political decision more than an economic decision. So when you put the economists at the, at the, on the spot, they will tell you that they need to look at a financing model for the policy. If you put the politician there, he will tell you that, look, we, we, we can still finance this and we will have to find ways to finance it. Okay. So there are all sorts of levies that we have to pay now for different reasons, even on the back of uh, COVID-19. The matter of taxing, taxation uh, to support free SHS has also been uh, mooted from time to time. From the standpoint of the IES, you are saying the source of financing ought to be looked at. What would be your proposal uh, to the education ministry, the education sector, in terms of the sustainability of free SHS? How do we sustain the financing? Yeah, so the Institute for Education said this, uh, IFEST, it's not IES, IFEST. 
um we 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 have said that you have to look at how you you the the, the model of financing that you are you are employing and that is a wholesale financing model a wholesale financing model means that you don't care whether anybody somebody is paying or not but if you look across uh, 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 education financing literature it tells you that any model of financing that ignores ability to pay is not a model of financing worth pursuing so we have to look at the ability to pay and if you are looking at ability to pay then you are looking at targeting and that is why we have said a lot of Well, Peter Antti there explaining to us what uh, IFEST would be proposing when it comes to financing or bankrolling free SHS. Of course, uh, the connection always a problem. Uh, Mr. Antti, you can go ahead. Yeah, so you have to you have to have a, 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 an index that will help you categorize your 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 students into three groups of people: those who can pay, those who can pay partially, and those who cannot pay at all. We 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 put the paper out to that effect and. If, if the authorities care to know, they can go through it and then invite for any clarification for us to do that. Apart from that, we have also talked about the 80-20 uh, day boarding policy. Mm. We note that when you really want to uh, uh, reduce the burden of financing of the policy, you have to target the day students more than the boarding, those who go to the, the, the boarding house. And that one is, is about reducing the number of people who go to the boarding houses to about 20 percent because if you look at the fee structure which was released recently you see that the border is supposed to pay around two thousand and, and over whilst the day student hovers around uh, seven hundred to thousand so it means that two the, the, the amount you use to pay one border can be used to pay for two uh, day students and, or three day students and that is a way that you might want to reduce the burden on yourself but the more important thing you have also to look at is that you look at an important policy like the national health insurance scheme we had we, we we needed to make sure it is sustainable so we created a stream of financing the policy and that is the national health insurance levy and even with that kind of a uh, consistent source of income, we can attest to the state of the uh, insurance scheme. So you might also want to think about coming out with a levy that will help support the financing of the policy. That is something that we we'll have to bring on board. And a, a, a consultative forum would, would, di would discuss that. But we need whatever decision that we have to take to make sure that there is a constant stream of income and not based on the commitment of a politician. That is what we need to do. And we need a system to make sure that the free SHS is sustained and not because it is a commitment of a politician and a politician mm. will see to it that that particular policy will continue. It means that when that politician is not there, we will not be able to push this policy forward. But that is a policy that we need to sustain it. And that is why we need to have this kind of hard discussion very soon. OK. Uh, do we still have Mr. Asifua with us? Mr. Asifua, are you still with us? OK, so it, it appears we, we may not have the member of parliament uh, for TAFO. Yes, Mr. Asifua, are you here, here with us? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Oh, great, great. Uh, so I, I just had to be sure. Now, we've discussed on a lot. If you have any reactions to what Mr. Antti has been saying thus far, uh, you can chip in briefly. But what I want to uh, take your or tease your brains on right now has to do with the double uh, track system. The initial projection was seven years. And of course, now we are hearing that in a matter of about two years, we're going to phase out the double uh, track system. We've moved back and forth on this. There were promises about getting out of the double track system, but we are back uh, with it, with all the other problems that have accompanied it. What do you feel is the feasibility of achieving this within the next two years, practically? Well, let me start by curing the mischief of uh, my brother Peter Hanty. You know, in my earlier submission, I made mention of the fact that assessing the learning outcomes could be gleaned from the West African Examination Council's website with respect to um, the analysis made uh, from um, the Ghana Education Service in terms of the outcomes uh, with respect to mathematics, integrated science, English. He didn't even wait for me to conclude with the social studies. Indeed, he talked about a drop of the social studies from 2019 to uh, 2020. That is from 75% to 64.31%. Now, clearly, even the drop in 2020 of the 64.31% uh, 
is far, far, far better than the 2016 figure. It is far, far, far better than the 2015 and the 2014 figure, respectively, because in 2016, uh, before we took over the reins of government, when you check the social studies and the number of people who wrote social studies was about 55%. In 2020, it is 54.31%. Agreed that indeed it's a drop from 75% in 2019, but that is even better. Now, if you also look at the argument about the double track as to why all of a sudden we are going to complete, or if we like, we are going to um, allow the double track to cease in two or three years. We have already indicated that um, the government did something that we call needs assessment in most of our various senior high schools. And the needs assessment was supposed to give the government an idea through the get fund securitization that we secured in Parliament, about 1.5 billion Ghana cities that uh, we needed to use for the infrastructure expansion because the double track was all about infrastructure. We believed that we cannot leave any student behind by reason that we do not have spaces or we do not have available spaces for these children. Because the 1992 Constitution, Chapter 6, the state, uh, the directive principles of state policy clearly indicates that it is the duty of the government to ensure that there is access to every child, every Tomite can have who completes BEC. And so if it is the government's responsibility in doing so, that is why we decided that we will expand infrastructure. Now, something like three-unit classroom blocks that have been built in our various senior high schools, we have over 60 of them. Um, Six-unit classroom block, we have about 171 of them. Um, Twelve-unit classroom block, we have 152 of them, which I know when you come to my constituency, Old Tafo constituency, um, or Central Tree Tree Senior High School has benefited from six unit classroom blocks, has benefited from 12 unit classroom blocks in Osage Tree Tree Senior High School. So clearly, um, the job that we needed to do to ensure that we eliminate the double track has been done, which I'm so sure that within some few years, two, three years, uh, we will be able to eliminate the double track. Issues of funding. Uh, every year, if you look at the um, amount of money that we spend as a nation, I've already, I've always been making this argument that um, in the 60s, um, the 70s, thereabout, the developmental um, acumen of Ghana, one way or the other, if it was not even at par with some of the Asian tigers, like uh, Malaysians, the Taiwans, and what have you, at least we are even better. And uh, we could simulate uh, better developmental um, um, acumen, or if you like, uh, better uh, developmental stories more than uh, some of these Asian tigers. What happened? That all of a sudden, these Asian tigers are doing better, they are doing marvelously well as compared to Ghana. It is because there was a deliberate attempt by these countries to ensure that they would develop human capital. Ghana, as a nation, cannot say that because we are spending about $7.7 billion, and that is even a figure from 2017 to 2021, 7.7 billion to develop the human capital of this nation. It is out of place because in 2021, the education sector budget alone was over 15 billion. And what it means is that for four years, for four years, the 7.7 billion that we've spent is woefully, woefully inadequate as compared to the total national budget that we spend every year. Because education alone is uh, 15 billion. What it means is that um, the total budget that we are spending as a nation was over uh, 70 billion. So if you use just about 20 or 15 or even 10 percent of the total budget of a nation to develop human capital, to develop people, to develop um, young men and young women so that we'll be able to simulate the better developmental uh, stories that we've been seeing and uh, some of our Asian tigers, then it is not out of place to spend that amount of money. Sustainability. Okay. Mm. Um, and let's, let's wrap it on that point. It is a, it is a political decision, uh, a political will um, that will ensure that indeed the state will use um, its resources to be able to fund um, free SHS. So I am most of the time not interested in where the money comes from. I am interested in the fact that the commitment is unwilling, the commitment is 100%. Wherever the money comes from, it is a decision by the current government that right. we will use these managed to be able to develop the human capacity of our young men and young men in this country. Okay. Now, now talking about the adequacy of, of you know, the education that we're getting, Mr. Anti, 
There also has been this talk about a national standardized test uh, for pupils in class four so that you don't have to wait the entire span of 11 years before you are tested at the basic uh, level. Uh, how much of an improvement do you feel this would bring to bear when it comes to the achievement of learning outcomes, when it comes to the practical knowledge that these pupils acquire uh, as they head into secondary school? Well, we cannot bench the sustainability of a policy on the commitment of any politician. We cannot do that. And therefore, we should have a roadmap up to how best we'll be able to sustain this policy beyond a particular politician or a political party. This is a national discussion we need to have. It is free SHS should not be about a political party or a political decision. And any time you look at it from that perspective, you are looking at it from a perspective whereby it will be we against them. It should be us pushing this policy to okay. reach the goal that we all want. Then let me come back to the national um, um, Standardized assessment. Testing. That we, yeah, it, it's very, it's a fantastic idea. And when when the, the national assessment framework was rolled out, some of us had the opportunity to talk about it. And we thought that, look, this is an important thing that we have missed a long while, and, and it is good that it's coming, that we're going to have students assess at uh, different levels to make sure that they meet the set standards that the, the system has set for them. So ideally, it was supposed to be basic two, basic four, basic six because they have gone through the, 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 the standard, standard curriculum. But unfortunately, because of COVID and other issues, we, have not, we are not able to do that, but we are now doing uh, for uh, basic four, which is good. It's going to give us a lot of information on how our students are faring at the very basic level, to the district level, to the regional level, to the national level. It gives information to the teachers, it gives information to parents, it gives information to school authorities and then the policy makers. And they will know where to introduce intervention and where not to introduce intervention, where to uh, uh, applaud the teacher and, and where to uh, make sure we assist the teacher. So this is a very important thing that we need to get right. But then we have some few issues that we would want to draw the attention of the authorities to. One, we have to understand that the, the, the system, how the system is going to to, to be implemented. What because uh, we, we the first question is is it going to be conducted by WIEC or it's going to be under NACA because we know NACA is for curriculum and assessment and over the years they, they have been doing some partially some of these uh, 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 regional tests and other things to uh, to to know how the curriculum is faring. So are we going to put it under NACA or is going to be uh, carried by WIEC? And if it's going to be carried by WIEC, um, can't we let NACA do it to ensure that we build their capacity and uh, ensure that they are also having some of these things to, to handle uh, uh, going forward? That is something because WIEC has got a lot of challenges and we, we are yet to even address them. So if you are pushing this to WIEC, you need to have a, a discussion on that. Apart from that, we also have to understand uh, how the test is going to be carried out in terms of uh, school, the, the school structure. Is it going to be like BECE that every student move to a, a particular center and then they, they do the test? Or is it is going to be a school-based assessment? If it's a school-based assessment, does it mean that the teachers in the school are those who are going to be vigilators? And would the teachers in the school be the, the, the examiners? I mean, those who are going to mark the scripts. If that is the case, then we have a big challenge because I foresee situations whereby teachers would find ways and means to make sure their students perform well. So these modalities need to be cleared. The last issue that we will have to uh, avert our minds to is those in class four now, and I've made this point over a, a period of time, those in class four now, because of COVID, were not able to go through the standard curriculum for basic three. And when you say this, they tell you that, okay, we ask them to go to class four so that they will complete. Fine. It means that they have completed basic three, but they are yet to complete basic four. Now, a standard assessment is supposed to go with a set standard uh, 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 performance uh, uh, criteria, which is supposed to be linked to basic four. So if they are going to be assessed on the standards for basic four, then we, we would want to draw the attention to, of the authorities to the fact that the standards for basic four are not yet met because they have not been able to complete the curriculum for basic four. What they, they did was to ask them to move from class three to class four, and then they will continue whatever they were supposed to do in class three, in class four. So at best, they can be assessed on the standards on basic three and not on the standards of basic four. These are issues that we will need clarity on. And if it is clear, we are good to go. We will have to support this thing because we need these assessments to monitor the progress of learning of our students as right. we go forward.
Now, staying on that beat in terms of uh, not just quality, but relevance as well. No country develops uh, without the backbone of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And it's something that uh, the education minister made mention of yesterday, talking about 10 community schools to be fitted with laboratory and other equipment uh, by the close of next year. He made the analogy, he drew the analogy of, uh, you know, between Ghana and Vietnam, where you have that country with about twice our population, yet producing about 100,000 engineers year yearly, while here in Ghana, we produce just above some 6,000 uh, engineers. So relevance, yes. But in terms of the framework, starting from this point of 10 STEM schools, do you feel that is going to suffice to uh, give us the sort of boost when it comes to numbers of engineers, those in the sciences that we need, Peter? Uh, yes, I, I, I think that um, there's a lot of of commitment to improve um, um, the science uh, technology front in our country. And one of these com com commitments is, is what they, they, they announced yesterday to, to create these STEM, <coughs> sorry, STEM centers that would, would support and, and help train uh, those who are interested in the science and then the technology and other things, mathematics and other things. And I think that is, that is, um, that is a good uh, policy that they would want to embark on. Um, they are setting up new schools and uh, the, he, he calls it a model school. And we, we would want to see how it, it, it pans out. It, 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 it means that they're going to have a very uh, a big school with all the needed uh, infrastructure, and that will help train the, the, the number of um, scientists that we would want to uh, um, um, have. So we don't practically have any issue with that. We, it's a policy that has been communicated. They started the building of the schools. He says that it's, it will start running uh, next year. We would want to see how th this goes because we believe that as a country, we are lagging behind in terms of um, our training and commitment to the sciences. And if you go to our, most of our secondary schools, uh, their science laboratories are, uh, are nothing to write home about. So if this is a way that will be able to ensure that we train more scientists to, 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 to spear the, the, the scientific uh, community that we, we want to build, I, I think that is the way to go. But that shouldn't end there. I think that they should also target our uh, uh, tertiary institutions uh, like Tech and University of Cape Coast and Legon, where they run some of these science courses at a higher level and give them these modern kinds of um, infrastructure so that at that level, those who are going through their, their, their science courses would still have the, 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 the requisite uh, training and equipment to, 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 to learn. So that, that is a good policy from, from them. We want to see how its implementation goes and how, how it's going to uh, end in, in that perspective. Okay, so as we gear up, uh, as we wrap the conversation, uh, let me come to Mr. Asifwa. So on the STEM, the STEM uh, schools bit, I just want your quick... Uh, take on that. What are your expectations? Are you looking forward to getting any in your community? And your wrap-up comments. Well, um, I think that the STEM um, schools have already been uh, documented, um, documented to the extent that uh, we have 10 of them um, that are supposed to be established. So obviously, uh, we are not going to get one in my constituency. But yes, in Ashanti region, uh, we are going to have one in Quad or so. Mm. And um, currently, if you check the extent of uh, the progress of work with respect to um, Abu Mosu uh, in the eastern region, um, clearly um, the Abu Mosu um, STEM Senior High School, um, as we speak, and if you go to the grounds, you find out that um, we are done with the boys and the girls' dormitories, we are done with the library block, we are done with the uh, principal's uh, residence, we are done with and the vice principal's residence, we are done the Sigby administration block, assembly hall, dining hall, and what have you. And so clearly, um, the government's commitment with respect to science, technology, um, engineering, mathematics is something that has been on the table of the government. And we are uh, sure that within uh, the next few uh, months, and uh, hopefully by next year, next academic year, uh, we should be able to start um, these schools. Uh, and this, this also goes to corroborate the government believe that we need to simulate uh, better de developmental stories and uh, uh, the kind of uh, education system that we've had in this country um, has always been uh, largely uh, humanity so it's like grammar kind of um, education for that matter there should be a total deviation uh, from what has always been um, the norm whereby 
our students will now be prepared for the fourth industrial revolution, mm. um, whereby artificial intelligence will be at the core of our education system. Robotics will be at the core of our education system. Internet of Things, that is the IoT, will also be at the core of our education system. 3D uh, printing and what have you. I remember the, <laughs> the review of the curriculum at the basic level, which we are also going to continue um, at the junior high school um, with a common core program, uh, was to bridge the gap as to what is actually taught in our various schools and uh, what is also demanded in the world of work. Uh, the world of work, if you see uh, what businesses and uh, owners of businesses, so it's okay. like employers have always been demanding from um, our students. Clearly, right. is that students who complete university or polytechnic will go to um, a world of work and um, whatever um, the, the, the particular child or the particular student actually learned in school. It's not what will be needed at the world of work. That right. student will have to go through uh, a new form of um, training or a new form of uh, rebranding to be able to fit in the world of work. And so the disconnect between what is taught in our various schools and what is needed in our world of work has always been a problem, and that is what informing the okay. education sector plan from 2018 to 2030 to right. be able to ensure that at every level, uh, i.e. that is... Uh, P4, when we are done with the assessment, it will give a reporting platform whereby we'll be able to know the kind of intervention that we have to um, give to these students after um, the national standard test. And that is supposed to ensure or give information to the Ministry of Education or the mm. uh, Ghana Education Service what has been the difficulties of our children. And so over the years, we've been engaging with um, EGMA, that is uh, the early grade mathematics assessment we've been uh, engaged with EGA, the early grade region assessment, we've been engaged with uh, uh, PISA, and all these were a kind of <coughs> assessment. And of course, the national education assessment, that is the NEA, uh, it has always been giving um, government an informed um, um, platform as to what we've been doing or how well we've been doing as far as yeah. the basic education is concerned. And so the national standards test. Um, it's also going to give government an informed decision as, as far as reporting is concerned, so as to give the proper interventions going forward to be right. able to ensure that we have proper learning outcomes. Well, this is a conversation uh, that continues. Of course, we can't uh, digest all of the issues uh, just within this conversation, but we are very grateful that you've joined us. Member of Parliament for Tafude Eko Asifwa, he is also on the Education Committee of uh, Parliament. We also have Peter Anti, Executive Director of the Institute for Education uh, Studies. Gentlemen, thank you so much for having joined uh, the conversation. Of course, you can also join us uh, wherever you are uh, on social media and share your thoughts on some of these matters as per the education minister. But when we return on the AM show, we cross over to Nigeria, where indeed uh, since Friday there has been that ban on using Twitter. The telecommunication uh, industry has complied based on Nigerian law. But what is the real feel on the ground? We get into that when we return.